In this video, I'm going to talk about layers, and uh, I would say this is an intermediate layers video in the sense of uh, I uh, already covered the basics in layers one, and I uh, probably will do an advanced layer topic um, later on, but uh, I'm going to cover some intermediate layer tools uh, that are helpful to know. Uh, you can uh, see a lot of the tools relating to layers, obviously, on the ribbon on the layers panel. So I'm going to go through some of the ones here that are more important. The first ones are on the top row, and as you hover, you can see them uh, labeled as isolate and unisolate. It's a pretty simple tool. Basically, it allows you to isolate one layer, and uh, therefore, it makes it very easy to select all the objects on that layer. So I'm going to select the isolate command. And then I'll select an object, and whatever layer that object is on will then be isolated. So I started the tool, selected an object, and then I hit space or enter. And it has turned off everything except for the objects on that layer. So now I can select them all and then change the properties of them or move them or rotate them or whatever I needed to do. And then to revert back to the previous layer state that I was in, I hit the icon next to that, which is unisolate. Now, it's worth noting that the isolate option uh, can work in two different ways. When I hit isolate, if you read the command line, it has uh, this option for settings. And that allows you to either turn off all the other layers or lock and fade. Uh, most of the time, I prefer them to just turn off so I have that set as the default um, method for what the isolate does. So if your isolate doesn't work exactly the same as mine because it's turning off, um, and you want it to lock or it's locking and you want it to turn off, then you can access those options via the command line with the settings. So now I can hit enter to accept off and then proceed with whatever I need to do. Um, and then enter again for paper space as well. So isolate is very handy that way. The next icons on the same area are the freeze and off. Obviously you can turn off or freeze layers from the pull down or the layer manager. But what's kind of uh, inconvenient about that sometimes is you may have an object and you're not sure what layer it's on. So you could select the object and see what layer it's on and then go up and turn the layer off. But if you wanted to do that with five layers or 10 layers, it can be somewhat tedious. So with the off or freeze icons, I can select the tool and then select the object that I want to be turned off and then it will immediately turn off the layer. So I don't even care what the layer is called. I don't need to know the name of the layer it'll just immediately turn it off. Uh, it's worth noting in this case, if you're working with blocks, uh, there are some settings that will control whether the, um, if there are embedded layers in the block, whether it's turning off the blocks layer as a whole or the layer that the entities within the block live on. So you can check those settings if it's not working the way that you want. So again, that's the off icon and freeze. Obviously one will do the freeze and the other will do the off, but they work in the same way. So that's also very handy. The uh, I'm going to skip a couple of these that I don't use as much. Obviously, you can always check them out and experiment with them and read and help if you do want to see what they do. But I'm focusing on the ones that I think are most useful. And the next one is make objects layer current. So if I'm uh, drawing some something or I want to draw something on this particular layer, I can just uh, select that. Um, I can just select that tool, make objects layer current, and then select that line, and it's made that the current layer. So again, I don't need to know what layer it is and then go up and hit it in the pull down. All I have to do is select that tool and select the object. So little time savers, but they add up when you consider all of these things uh, together. Don't forget, there's also uh, additional tools hidden under the heading for layers. So you can hit that pull down. And you have some easy tools there like turn all layers on, thaw all layers. So that might be useful if you know there's a layer uh, that contains something in your drawing but you can't remember what layer it is. You can hit those very quickly to turn on everything in order to find what you're looking for. And then uh, you can always undo once you figure out what layer that is. So that's very useful. Again, turn on all layers and thaw all layers. There's a lot of other tools here, some of which I will go over, uh, like I said, in my third layer video. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to talking about layer states now and layer filters. I'm going to talk about layer filters first because I think it's a little bit easier. And uh, that's accessible from the layer properties manager. So I hit that and uh, wait for my layer properties manager to open. 
And the idea of layer filters is sorting the list of layers so that you don't have so many to scroll through and deal with at a given time. If you're just practicing AutoCAD at home, you might not have very many layers, maybe only five layers or 10 layers in a small project. But in a realistic, uh, let's say hypothetically, an architecture firm that does commercial buildings or large residential buildings, you're gonna realistically have more like somewhere between 30 and 100 layers in a normal drawing. So that starts to become more of a pain to manage because you're scrolling through a lot of layers all the time. So layer filters allow you to filter out so that you don't have to see all the layers in a project. Now first, uh, in organization of layers, generally speaking, most companies have a prefix system. So you can see how all the layers in this drawing start with an A in this section. And then if I scroll down more, there's some that start with an AX, and those are for existing objects. That's how this particular drawing is set up. And then there's some C layers for civil objects. And then at the top, there are some layers without a prefix, and those are more miscellaneous objects. Um, you will often see additional prefixes like E for electrical, P for plumbing, M for mechanical, perhaps AN for annotation, like dimensions and notes. So a prefix system is a good way to organize yourself so that it groups related layers together in your list because layers will generally be sorted alphabetically that way. So that being said, it makes it easy to set up a filter so that uh, you can easily filter out some of the layers here so you don't see as many. There's a couple different types of filters. The first simple type of filter is a group filter. I can select new group filter in the top of the layer properties manager, which you can see has a shortcut of alt G. And basically it's just a group that you can put whatever layers into it that you want. So I can uh, call this test for right now, and then I can click back on all, and then I can select uh, any handful of layers that I want and drag them and drop them onto that filter. So then when I go to that filter, it only shows those three layers. What's nice about the filters is it will apply them to the layer properties or the layer pull down as well. It still shows the cabinet layer because that was my current layer. If I make a different layer current, then you'll see that that drops out. So that's a group filter. Basically, you're just selecting whatever layers you want and dropping them onto the filter and then it will add them to the group. So let me delete that. And uh, the other option for filters is a properties filter. And that's a little more powerful in the sense of it filters out layers automatically based upon their properties. What's nice about that is it will work with any properties that you want. So that is the uh, icon to the left of the group filter, which is Alt P. So I'm gonna select that. I will call that civil. Uh, hypothetically, maybe I want it to only show civil layers. And underneath that is the filter definition, which means you can define any properties that you want. So I'm gonna show C asterisk because that's going to be a wild card so that any layer that starts with a C and then ends with anything else will be shown in that filter. So in other words, an asterisk is a wild card, meaning that uh, after the C, it doesn't matter what the layer's name is. Um, I can hit OK. And you can see it's automatically filtered down to the civil layers that I have in this CAD file and I didn't need to do any manual work, that's automatic. So if I added more civil layers, then they would automatically be included in that filter. So I can close the uh, properties manager now. And then again, I can show you that in a pull down and it's showing the plumbing layer again because that's the current layer. So if I change to a civil current, a civil layer as current, then uh, it had dropped out the plumbing one. So it uh, is an easy way to filter down to specific groups of layers that you wanna work with at that given time. And then if I want to go back, I just go back to my layer properties. And then all I have to do is select all on the left. So the left box is important because whatever is highlighted is the filter that's currently being applied. So if I select all, then that's the filter that's currently applied. Your other option is to invert the filter at the very bottom, invert. So that means uh, that it's going to do the opposite of the filter. So for example, if I select civil and then invert, it's showing all layers that do not start with a C in the group. So that's the uh, idea of inverting a filter. And then again, that would be applied to the pull down if I needed it to. So filters can be very handy in that way in order to uh, weed out some of your layers that you don't need for maybe uh, a certain period of time that you're working on your drawing. 
The next thing I'm going to show you is layer states. Layer states have gone through somewhat of an evolution uh, over the last few years because uh, three or four years ago, uh, AutoCAD and especially AutoCAD architecture had uh, two or three different ways to do layer states. So that was somewhat confusing. So they've streamlined that so that there's really one layer states manager uh, in AutoCAD now. And it's a lot easier to understand that way. You'll see the layer state pull down is right above the layer manager pull down. Un unsaved layer state is what's shown there right now. It, just think about a layer state as a snapshot of whatever your layers are set up as right now, especially in terms of on off or visibility. And this is really important when it gets to complicated drawings because a lot of times architecture firms or engineering firms will draw all the building components uh, stacked one on top of another on different layers within the same CAD file. And that's true about the CAD file that I'm in now. And that's why I'm using this as an example. So if I hit this pull down, I can hit floor plan and it toggles to the floor plan layer state. That didn't change anything because I was already on that layer state to begin with. Now, if I hit reflected, you can see how that instantly changed to a reflected view of the building, reflected ceiling plan, in other words, where the ceiling plan, meaning obviously what's at the ceiling level. So it's the same drawing, it's on um, the same objects, but it's uh, instantly toggled off a group of layers and toggled on a different group of layers. That's the only thing that's changed. So if you hit the pull down, you can see how the door layer is off, the equipment is off, the fire extinguishers are off, etc. And then if I switch back to floor plan, now you can see how the door layer is on, the equipment is on, the fire extinguishers are on. So all that's doing is switching back and forth between two different snapshots of the layer's properties at that moment. And there's a third layer state, and that's the roof plan. So there's the roof plan of the overall building. So these are pretty easy to set up. You can either edit a layer state that's already here, or you can uh, kind of set up the layer configuration the way you, you want, and then save that as a layer state. So let's say that I didn't have this saved as a layer state. I could go through and manually set up what I want it to be turned on and off using the light bulbs or the sun or using the icons up here at the top that I just told you about the freeze and off icons and then I can hit the layer states pull down and manage layer states or I can do it right here with save or new layer state that would work as well if I hit manage then I can hit new and then save this as a new layer state so okay and then I can close so let's say I was working in a floor plan view and then I could switch over to test and then instantly it switches to that. So it's pretty easy to set that up. You just kind of set up what you want on the screen as far as on and off. And then you can go and save that as a layer state. If you want to modify a layer state, the easiest way to do it, in my opinion, is to go to manage and then select the one that you're modifying and hit edit on the right. And then you can turn on or off whatever you want. You do have the option to do it on the drawing screen, uh, turn on or off whatever you want. And then you can save over or overwrite one that you already have. And that works just as well. Kind of depends on your own personal preferences in that regard. So those are some uh, good layer tips that, again, may not be um, quite as beneficial if you're just working on really small projects because you're learning right now. But when it comes to working in a firm, these are very important methods that firms use on a day-to-day -day basis in order to manage their files and be much more organized. In general, you just want to be very particular about how your layers are named and sorted so that your list makes a lot of sense here if you want to use a prefix idea. And then obviously uh, make smart decisions about colors so that you have a wide variety of colors and then the line weights appropriately as well. These line weights all show as zero because this particular drawing was set up um, so that the color relates to the line weight. And that's why these all say zero in the line weight column right now. So that's it for layers for right now. I will go over some more layer tools in my advanced video a little later.